even President Barack Obama has come out in the favor of two women getting married, of two men getting married. You know, this is a terrible thing. This is an audacious thing. It's a dangerous thing when two men can get married in the United States of America. When two women can get married in the United States of America. You see, if that becomes very permanent, that means the human race stops reproducing. And the human race, if the human race stops reproducing, then they won't have anybody to be with. Amen. But I want you to understand that Christ is the head of every man. I get that, brother. He's your head. Now, whether you acknowledge him or not, he's still your head. And the man, now, sister, don't get upset with me. I didn't say this. And the man is the head of the woman. And God is the head of Christ. Now, God is the head of Christ. Now, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But God is the head. Jesus is not the head. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is not the head. God is the head. And that's where a lot of people go wrong in there. I meet so many people there at the conferences I go to, at the pastor's conference, about 100 of us meet every Monday. You'd be surprised how many problems they're having in their churches and among their members. And they said, Doc, don't you have any problems? I said, I don't have any problems. Don't have problems in terms of tithes and offerings, don't have problems in terms of members, don't have problems, period. Because all my problems, I just ship them on up to heaven. Amen. And you know, that's a wonderful thing to do. But some people can't do that. All right? Somebody said, no, no, no. He says, for every man who has something on his head, I do this for y'all today, sisters. For every man who has something on his head while praying or prophesying disgraces his head. Now, who's his head? Jesus. So if you got your hat on in the church and you're talking to Jesus or you think you're praising Jesus, he said, take your hat off. His respect. He said, but now every woman, I think some sisters don't listen to the scriptures. Every woman who has her head uncovered while praying, now didn't say it by saying, just say praying, or uh, prophesying, prophesying means talking uh, by via the Holy Spirit and by the authority of the Holy Spirit, not necessarily reading from Scripture, but being in line with the Scripture. Did you get that? Do this apart from me now. He said, but every woman has her head uncovered while praying. So sisters, now, do you get on your knees at night like praying? Do you have your head covered or uncovered? See, some scriptures we stay away from. Some scriptures they don't even mention on television and radio. Because they know, know people are not going to accept it. Amen? Now notice he says, but every woman who has her head uncovered while praying or prophesying just graces her head. Now, who is her head? Wait a minute. Ah, ah, she is one of the one and the same as a woman who whose head is shaved. Y'all remember that actress who had all her hair shaved off? <coughs> now men shave their all the hell. If they got any left. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. So you can't shave it off. I, I still got mine is getting, you know, you see get thin, I'm trying to hold one of the better. It's getting it's getting mighty thin. Yeah. Now notice. Verse 6. For if a woman does not cover her head. Now the Catholics have this down to the T. They have the little doors they put on top of their heads. But our sisters, they put on some nice hats. <laughs> For if a woman does not cover her head, let her also have her hair cut off. Now some of y'all didn't know that in the scripture. They said, if a woman come to church, they say, if they don't cover their head, they say, cut your hair off. Now that, that's Tom Jane. You, you think Paul missed it there? You think Paul he got he got inspiration for all the rest of the book, but he didn't, he didn't get into that? You ever heard about preach on that? Yeah, but well, see, he has. He's been around a while. By the way, Dr. Gordon Taylor, y'all heard about him, right? Okay. Y'all heard about Dr. Gordon Taylor, right? You didn't hear? My friend went to do the Lord, he's 96 years old. Dr. Calvin Taylor. All right. But the woman does not cover her. Hair, cover her head, brother. Let her also have her hair cut off. Is that inspired too? 
I know. I'm getting a little closer over this. But if it is disgraceful for a woman to have her hair cut off, or her head shaved, let her cover her hair. Mm -hmm. So sisters, y'all put on your hat today, right in my own scripture. <laughs> Y'all can think about that. How <laughs> you feel that? Amen. For a man ought not to have his head covered. Some men come to church keep that closer in some tradition. Since he is the image and glory of God. That's just some of y'all may not like that, but I didn't like it. It says the man, man is the image and the glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. Now, what that means is glory there comes from real uh, doxa. It means to brilliantly shine forth. Now he says, sisters, you are the glory of men. <coughs> he says now, let me read this again. He says now verse 6. For if a woman does not cover her hair, but also have her hair cut off. Now you got a few who cut the hair off, they cut off everything. All right? Now, a man ought not to have his head covered, since he's the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Now, spread up that means you need to see to treat your wife better than you can treat yourself. See, that's your glory. That's, that's the one who shines brilliantly in your family. Even when she, don't, she doesn't do what pleases you, that's still your glory. Because you married her. You said, I do. And she said, I do. So therefore, you have a responsibility to carry out what God told you to do about the woman. See, see, I don't think the sister thought about it. I was going about putting on all the beautiful hats today. They look real good, don't they? Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. You see, they didn't think about it being a thought, though. Amen. Now notice. For a man, let me read this again. For a man does not originate from woman, but woman from man. Now you say, well, Pastor, is that the only scripture we need to at least? Well, you remember Adam? You remember what he did after he formed out of the ground? You know what he did, don't you? He put Adam to sleep and took Eve out of it. Did y'all remember that in Genesis? Yes. So man originated from the woman. So brothers, don't be too hard on women because you didn't get here by yourself. You got here through the woman. Just like everybody else. All right? Now notice. Therefore, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. He said you might cause the angels to mess up when you don't have authority on your head. I thought I was doing this today because y'all have some of the beautiful hats. I know you're going to do hats today. And I said, let me talk about this for a minute. Some people don't know it's in there. So you get right in line with the word of God when you put on these hats. Amen. 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 You know, back in the day when I was a boy, uh, my mother didn't go to church without a hat on. That was a tradition that they had. And if you went to church with, with, with a, without a hat on, you were saying that you were not fully properly dressed. I mean, you go to Sunday school, but you didn't go back home and get your hat on. <laughs> or you go to prayer, but you did not make church. All right? Now notice. However, in the Lord, now you're going to like this part. However, now, how, all that's been said, right? However, in the Lord, neither is the woman independent of the man. I'm going to break it down in a minute. Nor is man independent of the woman. For the man originates from the woman. For the woman originates from the man, so also the man has the birth through the woman. Can't do it by, they can't do it by themselves. I don't care what they do. You can say all you want, that's my child, it's not yours. But when you have a child, that's both your child, you can't change it. Amen. Amen. And that's going to be your child until you leave here. You, I don't care what you say to them, what you do to them, what you do. Amen. They still, that's still your child. Amen. And, and children, no matter how your parents act, and you may not be pleased with what they do or how they, or what they say or how they live, they are still your parents. Amen. Amen. And you can't get any more. Because you're not going back in the womb and then come back out again. Of another woman. Okay. Just not going to happen. Now notice. He says, now notice. However, I'm going to read this verse again now, verse 11. However, in the law, neither is woman independent. Your King James reads a little differently. Of man, nor is man independent of the woman. What's it saying? That's saying you can't get in this world without having a mom and dad. So don't ever go around saying, I don't have a dad. I don't have, I don't have a mother. Yes, you do, even if they don't take care of you. Okay. 
That's still your mom and dad. There's no way you can get around Amen. You can't go back and get another one. I thought I was on the day. Now notice. For as the woman originates from the man, that's how God started off. Origination from the man. He took Adam, he took Eve from Adam. That's the only time he ever took a woman from a man. That is, just, 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 just a man. And he took a woman from him. He took the man and then a woman. That's why, I'm doing that, that's, that's too many. For as the woman originates from the man, so also the man has birth through the woman. That's after Eve was created. And all things originate <coughs> from God. Amen. Everything there is. This will help you when you get into some hard places in life. Everything there is, everything that happens in this world originated from God. Amen. <coughs> Even hell. Amen. God created hell so those who didn't want to go to heaven to go to hell. Yes. Sounds strange. Have you ever heard anybody say, go to hell? Well, that's a good expression. Go to hell. And hell is a good place to go for those some people. Because they, they always have they always have problems, they're always causing trouble. So hell is, you know, they, there's never quiet in hell. There's always something going on. Now heaven is kind of quiet. Now don't don't misunderstand. Now those folks who go to hell, they're not gonna show up on earth again. They're gonna stay in hell the rest of the rest of the days. I mean, they don't be there for eternity. But they say, when you go to heaven, then you have the possibility of inheriting the whole earth. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. And that belongs to you. Even, even there's going to come, 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 come a point when that you don't have to pay any more real estate taxes. <laughs> you don't have to pay any city taxes. City payroll taxes. You're going to be free from all of that. And that's enough there just to come, come to church every, every Sunday. <laughs> and to come to prayer meeting. Not, just, just that. <laughs> you see, if God never did anything else for us, are you still there? Yeah, still yeah. with you. He says, now, let me read this verse again. Don't get carried away now. He says, neither is the woman independent of the man, nor is man independent of the woman. In other words, you had, that's how you arrived here. You couldn't come here without a dad and a mother. And I heard some people, I don't have a dad. I'll see you lying. I've had some, had some ladies say, I don't have a dad. Yes, you do. You lying. You have a dad. Now, you may not like him. You may not like what he does. You may not like your mother. But even if you don't, they steal your mother, they steal your mom and dad, and you still owe them a certain amount of respect. Yes. That's your mother and father. Even when they don't do what they ought to do. And I, I you know, I've passed from 40 some, 40 some years. I have to know, Dr. Jason Wingard, that I have that nobody always does everything right all the time. Amen. Amen. You know, I want to meet you. We are copyrighted. And get rich. Y'all got money quiet. Voice quiet. Here. Amen. Now notice. Judge for yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with a head uncovered? You know what's coming back? He said a woman when she prays needs to have her head covered. Digging the road down the ditch. Isn't that something? That's amazing, isn't it? Now notice he even say in church. He said she have her head covered. Now how many people even, even pray pray? You know, these days. I don't know, I don't know if everybody in the church pray, get on these pray. I remember, remember I said before. I don't think people I don't know if people do like my mother used to do. I told y'all this once before. My mother prayed every night on her knees by the bed. I mentioned to you about my dad too. Now he, he, he did a few things he should have done. And of course, I was the one in the family who got that straight out. They respected me as a pastor. And I was their son. Are you with me? Yes. You see, therefore, when you know the truth, you can act on the truth. When you don't know the truth, you can't act on the truth. Amen. What you Amen. don't know, you can't do. Amen. And why you have men, you can't lead. Yes. He says, does not even nature teach itself you that a man that if a man has long hair it is a dishonor to him some people don't know this scripture now it's all right for a woman to have long hair it's an honor to her but if a man walk around half out of the neck it's dishonor to you now some people they say I read the power from Kibber to Kibber and this back are y'all still there? Amen. Amen. But if a woman has long hair, it is 
Hey, glory to her. Glory means, again, okay, like glory means to brilliantly shine forth. Have you ever been looking at a light in, in, in your eyes and you couldn't stand and look at that straight at it? That, that's what it's brilliant, that's what it means there. That, 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 it's a glory, it's a brilliant shine forth to her. You ever notice how much, how much women spend on, make, on doing hair? Hair, make, hair? hair dresses make a whole lot of money off of all ladies. Except those who learn how to do old hair. And of course, some of our women had to do that, you know, because they didn't have money to pay those people to do their hair. Are you with me? And then they came out with wigs. <laughs> and men got the two pennies and women got the wigs. Just go home and take it off and, you'll, and you can all straight. <laughs> all you got is a two penny, you go home and take that off. All right, so don't ever try to patch up because that thing might come off sometimes. Let's go with that. You see, he says, now in giving these instructions, I do not praise you because you come together for the better, not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear, he says, I hear that the vision exists among you, and in part, I believe it. Why? There must be factions and divisions among you, so that those who are approved may become evident among you. And as those who are walking a straight life, they shine brightly among those who are not doing what they're supposed to do. Are you with me? Yes. Now, I'm just going to say it because all of us have what? Sinned, not going to, and come short of the glory of God. Somebody said, well, I passed, I never sinned. You lying, you did. <laughs> How do I know? I know the scriptures. And then, but once you get forgiveness for the sin, then you are pristine pure. It's as if you never sinned. As a matter of fact, Pastor, I never sinned. I just looked at it. I didn't say anything. They didn't argue with it. Because they had to mind me that. You know, some people just think they're better than everybody else. Uh -huh. You ever been in it like that? And they don't know they may be going to hell. They don't even be born again. Amen. All right, now, notice. Amen. Therefore, when you meet together, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Now, they had turned the Lord's Supper into a party. You know, we think it was being holy. They had turned it into a party. And he said, now, you have just messed over the Lord's Supper of the Holy Communion. He said, now, for in your eating, one takes his own supper first, and one is hungry, and another is drunk. They were getting drunk around the communion table. <laughs> you know, Pontius, they use grape juice. Catholics, they use wine. I used to like going to the Catholic mass, so I got wine. <laughs> I was going to the Catholic church. I got in. I go more than once. I don't go anymore. Are you with me? So, but it's all right to serve wine in the Protestant church because the Holy Communion was wine. Jesus was not drinking grape, grape juice when he gave it to the apostles. Amen. Amen. It was wine they were drinking. Yes. But see, people get so sedated today, they don't want to say, I can't be drinking no wine and, and go home and drink some Shem uh, Shreve. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a bartender, you know. <laughs> what? Do you not have houses in which to eat and drink? He says, it's all right to drink, sir, but go to your house to eat and drink. He said, because, or uh, do you not, or uh, do you despise the church? Church there means a civil of God and shame those who have nothing. He said, you got, you drink and eat and everybody else, don't, everyone else does not have anything. He said, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. He said, you ought to buy some for them. You know, whenever we want to do something good for folk in the church, you just, we want to make a big to do about it, announce the paper and all that. He said, don't, just do it. Don't, you don't have to do all that. Amen. Are you all there? Amen. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this I will not praise you. And then he goes into the Lord's Supper. He says, I received this from the Lord. He says, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. And then Baptists decided all they could must up would be once a month. They, they take them. My daddy told me once, my dad was digging a church. He said, he's a Stanley. It takes folk a month to get ready to take cold communion. But isn't it amazing that Catholics can get ready every year, every day? And Protestants say, well, don't have no more. I, I tried to go to the church out past right? Folks said, no, we, we don't want cold communion at all. Isn't that amazing? And he says, often as you do this, he didn't say you do it once a month or once a year. He says, often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. He said, remember that I shed my blood. Remember that my back was a bloody mess. Scripture doesn't say a bloody mess, that's what it means in the Greek. 
He said, remember that about me. And when we remember that, we can really magnify and glorify the Lord because we're so gracious for what he did. Yes. 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 When we especially remember that heaven is a real place. Yes, it is. Where real people are. Where spirit beings are. Yes. I was thinking about that other day. You know, have you ever seen, uh, I've said this before, have you ever seen oxygen? Anybody? No. If you've never seen oxygen, then you shouldn't believe you got oxygen. <laughs> I've never seen it. Amen. But I tell you what, if it leaves this room, all of us are dead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, very soon. Are you with me? Yeah. Look at God. Now notice. He says, he says here, do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. Now I want to come, come here to another scripture and I'm going to close our show. Just a moment. Just let me get into that world. Jesus was dealing with the commandments and some of the Pharisees. Then some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? Well, they do not wash their hands before they eat bread. Now, what in the world is that about? They were trying to be too particular about outdoor things. They don't wash their hands before they eat their bread. How many times have you been out by yourself and you didn't wash your hands before you ate your hamburger? <laughs> Oh, you ate your steak at the restaurant. You didn't get to go to the restaurant to wash your hands before you ate your steak and your caviar, did you? He said, now look. And he said to them, why do you yourself pass, grasp the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? You know what people do for tradition? They'll travel a thousand miles to keep a tradition and won't travel ten miles to get to church. Ain't that something? Are you with me? Where was your last family reunion? How much did you have paid? He says, but you say, who will say to his father or mother, whatever I have that will help you has been given to God, he is not to honor his father or mother. And by this you invalidate the word of God for the sake of your tradition. He said, your tradition keep you from honoring your mom and dad. And I've seen that happen in these 47 years of pastoring. I said, people say, well, Pastor, I can't help out. I said, well, how do you get this big house you got here? How did you get all of these cars in your driveway if you can't help out? That's your mom and dad. That's how you got here. Are you still there? Yes. Amen. Understanding. Understanding women in hats. And you say, how does that fit in? Because, sisters, by the hat you have on your head, then you look lovely. It means you're under authority. Now, you know, that's all y'all about to put about that. We're born here. <laughs> Are you with me? Amen. It means you're under authority. It means that Adam was the head of Eve, and Eve was subject to Adam. It's all a part of what God designed for his church. And when we do what God designed for his church, we are blessed. <laughs> Somebody asked me again last week. Dr. Houston, how are you doing? That's first of all, we're going to doctor. Are you doing all right? Are you speaking okay? They asked me again last week, lot of folk. I said, I wish they stopped asking me that. Amen. 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 Because you see, saints, listen, some of y'all have known me a lot of years. Oh, yeah. I've basically been always been the same, haven't I? Yeah. Basically the same. And I'm going to be the same until this body dies. Amen. Because, see, this scripture here, for me, is eternal, is true, it works, and it pays for students. It always will. I don't fear death. I don't fear sickness. I don't fear being at home just me. I don't feel that at all. Somebody said, somebody said to me, well, what if Miss Houston came up, up back to see you? I said, that's all right. She can come visit. I said, what? I said, she can come visit. It's all right. It's all right. I sleep well every night. Are you with me? So therefore, says, I want to tell you that sisters, you look lovely in your house. And you can wear them often if you like. It's an indication of your authority under the man. That's what it's an indication of. 
and that you love the Lord and you love the way he does things. Amen. And that's my message for today. Amen. Is anyone present who has not been born again? If so, I invite you to come forward. I said born again. You know, notice I say born again and not the church. It's not before.